Welcome back, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me. Listen, I just want to do something really laid back. And it's called morning glory. And I don't know how many of these there will be, but just something that you can wake up in the morning and rake in God's glory. Okay. So whether you're going to be on your way to work or just getting ready for work, you don't even have to be looking at this. That's the beauty of it. A lot of times I'll be watching YouTube videos and just have, you know, one earphone in while I'm going about my day. So that's what I hope you do with this. I will release them in the mornings. I'm on the East coast. So for me, if you're on the West coast, it's coming out even earlier for you. Okay. So anyway, today our title of this and our topic is just not giving the devil the response that he wants. Okay. God says, stop giving the devil the response that he wants. Okay. When I say devil, I don't just mean Satan, right? The accuser of the brethren, the one we particularly think of as Satan. Okay. It's my understanding. He is nowhere near God. And so the thing is he can't be everywhere all at once like God can, but his influence can. Okay. And so he has, um, spiritual beings that work for him, right? Uh, my personal belief is he has, of course, the fallen angels, right? Jesus said, I saw Satan fall like lightning. We see that we see the fall in other places in the Bible that took place. Right. And what happened is he took a third of the angels with him. Okay. Um, without getting too much into that, Let's just kind of remember <laughs> where we're going with this. Okay. But not only does he have a third of the angels with him, which are now, um, bad angels, of course, but I believe that there's also ranking and what I don't have this in a bag and I don't completely understand the whole process and you know, the different ranks and that type of thing. I do see in Ephesians chapter six, where, um, there seems to be some sort of differences laid out. Okay. It says we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but we wrestle against the rulers of darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places and, and those types of things. So he's laying those out. Right. And so I, I do believe that there's different ranks and different levels. Um, how all that works again, I don't know. Okay. But so, you know, when I say stop giving the devil, the response that he wants, I'm not just referring to the devil. I'm referring to darkness in general. I'm referring to the devil and his minions. Okay. Spiritual wickedness in a high place, whether you want to call them spirits, whether you want to call them demons, I don't know. Okay. It's up to you. But so, you know, stop giving the devil the response that he wants. Um, so for each of us, we have a hot spot. We have a weak spot, right? We have something that, um, the devil knows. Okay. The Bible says that, that, uh, he walks around, like a roaring lion seeking who, who, whom he can devour, right? We're supposed to be sober and vigilant, alert, looking around on guard, right? Um, the Bible also says that the wicked watches the righteous and seeks to slay him. Okay. So he, he's aware he's watching us. And again, I'm not just saying Satan in general, these demons watch us. The spirits watch us. They test us. They know us. They know what we're doing just as if, you know, you're watching, uh, you were a, a, a pro football player and you studied your opposing team. You would want to know what are their strategies? What are their weaknesses? What are their plans? What, you know, how do they do things? You would watch them. You would investigate them. You would analyze them to come up with a plan working against them. Okay. And that's what the devil does. That's what the devil and all of his minions do for us. They look at us all day long. They watch us. They see what we've done in the past, how we handle certain situations, what keeps getting us. That's what they want. They want to keep getting us. Okay. And so, um, one of my hot buttons and something that the Lord, this is where the Lord tells me constantly, don't give him the response that he wants. Okay. So I was walking through something, um, a couple of weeks ago and, um, something, something really hard happened to me about eight years ago. And I've talked just, I've never fully come out and said what it was, but I went through a very, very deep <laughs> spiritual breaking. Okay some different things came against me and different people hurt me. And, um, it, it wasn't all of just the hurt. It was just God's timing to break me apart, to show me what was on the inside and to build me up for his kingdom. Okay. But one of the things, because it's such a deep wound of mine, it keeps, it's reoccurring. It's reoccurring. The Lord has to tell me, let it go. 
just let it go. Just stop. Just don't do that. Don't do that. Just walk away. That's not truth. Don't listen to it. Just let it go. You know, so probably about a week or two ago, I'm in my prayer time and I'm complaining about this one thing with a different person that seems to be a reoccurring thing in my life. And I, I said, um, I said, Lord, what do you want me to do about this? Look, I know this isn't true, but this keeps recurring in my life. And I don't know what to do about it. And plain and simple, he said this. He said, don't let it rattle you. And that's all he had to say. And the moment he said that, I thought to myself, I've been giving the devil the response that he wants. And then I've thought of this illustration and how simple this is because we deal with this in our house, okay? Some of you guys know, some don't. My youngest is adopted. We've had her since she was five weeks old. And she's now seven. Um, she's got some spiritual bondage and stuff that comes with the generational stuff, things we've been working through, things we haven't been successful working through, things that the Lord has given us wisdom to work on, that kind of thing, okay? One of the things that she, she has is a spirit of persecution. And I'm not here to pick on her and I'm not just saying or naming things that, um, because I feel like naming spirits, okay? I'm literally calling it the spirit of persecution because that is what the Lord told me it is, okay? You don't recognize it, but a bullying spirit, a trolling spirit, that is the spirit of persecution, okay? When we say, when we say persecution, we, we think of one thing, Okay? And that's typically persecution against Christians, right? That's what comes to mind. Maybe someone's stoning you or uh, crucifying you for what you believe. Okay? But if you look up the word persecution, that's, it's not limited to that. Okay? And so back to my point, the Lord's told me it's the spirit of persecution. Okay? So one of the problems we have in this house is a constant trolling spirit. Um, but the issue is... It only has one target, or it has several targets, but it has one favorite target. And the reason it has this favorite target, my son, my, mi my middle child, is because he constantly gives it the response that it's looking for. And he doesn't know how to stop. <laughs> We've told him many times, we have said, you got to ignore it. Just ignore it. Don't get angry. Don't get frustrated. Don't freak out. Don't cry. Just ignore it. Ask yourself, is it true? If it's not true, well, let it go. Okay? Because the Bible says we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. We wrestle against spiritual wickedness in high places. Okay? And so recognizing these things are our first step. Okay. And so when the Lord told me in my prayer time, he said, don't let it rattle you. I realized that I have a long history of letting this same exact thing rattle me every stinking time. <laughs> and then I realized if I, I'm thinking, how is this a solution to my problem? How is not letting this rattle me? Cause it's been recurring. How is not letting this rattle me a solution to this stopping? And that's when I thought of my son and my daughter and the constant advice that we're giving him over and over. Stop, buddy. You're giving her the response she's looking for. And when you do that, she's going to keep seeking for more. She's going to keep coming back for more. Okay. And again, my husband and I, we see through it. It's not her. It's what's coming against her. Okay. And that's not to say that she, you know, is this evil, horrible person. That's not what I'm trying to say. Okay. I'm giving you a very obvious illustration because some of us, all of us are used by spirits day in and day out. We are a host. Okay. That is plain and simple. That's what we are. We're a host and we're either going to be a host for good and we're going to walk in the spirit of God or we're going to be a host for evil. And unfortunately, even choosing to be a host for good, we have to choose it every minute, every hour, every day, every month, every year. We have to choose it. Okay. But we're a host regardless of how you see it. We're a host. We're either a host for good or we're a host for evil. Okay. 
I'm just giving you an is obvious example because some of it just isn't obvious. You know, we, we just brush it off and we think it's nothing. Okay, but this is a very spiritual world that we live in, whether we like to see it that way or not. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood. Okay, so if there's wrestling, if there's quarreling, if there's that kind of thing going on, guess what? It's spiritual. Okay? All right, so like I said, he is constantly giving her the response that she wants. Now it's what's coming against her. So he's giving this thing the response that it wants. My husband and I have dealt with this. Okay, another one of the things that we kind of um, have to deal with in this house with my seven year old is rage, the spirit of rage. Okay, one of the many things that we deal with. Okay, so like I said, some of them we've worked through, some of them we haven't. Thank God that I know other parents that have dealt with things like this. And um, anyway, I can go on and on and on in that area, okay? But one of the things that we deal with on, on a not super regular basis, it's definitely uh, over the years, um, it's gotten less and less and um, less extreme. And I'm so grateful for that, for how the Lord has coached us through this, because let me tell you, sometimes God's wisdom does not make sense to us. <laughs> But if we're obedient, we see that he actually knows what he's talking about, okay? So we deal with this spirit of rage. And as we see in the Bible, right, we see where um, the guy brought his son to Jesus. He said the disciples couldn't cast it out. Um, so he brought him to Jesus to do so. And he says, when the spirit seizes him, he, casts, he tries to cast himself into the fire or to the water. So we have this boy doing suicidal things, okay? Um, and he says, when the spirit seizes him. And so I picture these spirits kind of like frogs and, and they, they have several hosts and they jump and they're not always intentionally using one host at a time. Okay. And this is my, this is just what I suspect by some things that I've seen. And you can see biblically when it seizes him, that means it doesn't seize him all the time, but when it seizes him, this is what happens, okay? And so when this spirit seizes my daughter, and yes, I'm, I'm calling it a spirit. I'm calling it as it is. This is what the Lord calls it, okay? Like it or not, I know some people are probably watching this and they're like, it's mental health. You're welcome to believe what you want to believe, okay? Not trying to make anyone upset. Those who have been in this situation will 100% understand what I'm talking about. Okay, so when this spirit seizes my daughter, it will do anything to make you angry, okay? And as a parent, when your child is not doing what you, what you want them to do, okay, what you know is right for them, what you know is safe for them, what you know you have raised all your other kids to do, okay, it can be already very frustrating, okay? But when you add spiritual stuff on top of it, well-fed, generational spiritual stuff on top of it. Let me tell you that the intensity, intensity of it is up by a thousand, okay? So it's a very difficult situation already, okay? And you got everyone around you telling you how to parent um, according to physical tools, okay? <laughs> Those physical tools that none of them work, <laughs> all right? And you have the fact that you can pray and pray and pray and pray and pray over this situation and it still comes back around, okay? That's not to say that God is out of control. He has told us how to handle that. And a lot of that time is about standing, okay? He doesn't always take the battle from us, right? But calls us to armor up and stand, okay? Also, tools are needed, okay? She needs spiritual options to reach to. So if let's say you took away that part of her, how would she react the next time? Well, she wouldn't know. So she has to be shown new options. She has to be taught. Well, if I can't reach to this, which I've always reached to, and it feels good to reach to this, what do I reach to? Okay, so I'm just laying out some ideas of some things that the Lord has said. So through time, she's going to develop tools so she can reach to new tools instead of these old tools over here that cause destruction, okay? All right, so the spirit of rage, when it seizes her, 
all it wants to see because look at its name, okay? It doesn't get its name because what the person is doing. It gets its name because that's what it craves. That's what it wants. It picks hosts that are going to give that up easily, okay? And so fire can cause more fire, right? You see fire and then it's a windy day and then the fire jumps in like 10 different places and then you have ginormous fires. I'm from California and we saw that all the time with the wind and just the dryness and the way that it is, okay? And so that's what the Lord had to teach us. Fire on top of fire only produces more fire, okay? So his solution to handling a rage storm, this might surprise you, is gentleness, peace, not yelling, not disciplining in the moment. Because let me tell you, a rage storm is different from a tantrum, okay? Should you parent and discipline through a tantrum? Absolutely. A rage storm is a completely different thing. And if you've experienced it, you know exactly what I'm talking about. There is no logic taking place in a rage storm. You can discipline all you want and all that's going to do is cause more fire, okay? So God's answer to that is peace and gentleness. Standing in peace, right? Not letting yourself get out of control. Look, because that's what that spirit wants. The spirit already has control of that person. And what it's seeking now is to get everyone else out of control so he can, he, she, whatever, it can feed off the rage, the anger, the frustration, the lack of self-control that is going to come through all those people that are being attacked by the person suffering this spirit of rage. And so at some point, you have to sit back and say, I will not give that spirit the response that it wants and watch things change. Now, when we first started inputting, is inputting? I don't know if that's the right word. I make up words sometimes. Or, uh, or I put words with things where they don't belong. Okay, and I'm just being honest because this is an honest, vulnerable discussion. Um, but sometimes... In the beginning, when we started implementing, there it is, implementing this strategy, we're going to remain calm. We're going to tag team, right? My husband and I, we're going to tag team, and we are not going to be out of control. We're going to make sure that we are at peace internally. We are gentle. Our responses are gentle because it's no longer my seven-year-old that I'm ministering, that I'm that I'm talking to. It's no longer my seven-year-old that I'm trying to discipline. It's no longer my seven-year-old that I'm trying to, um, for lack of a better word, control, okay? It's a spirit that has seized her and is doing this, okay? So parenting tools aren't gonna work in that moment, okay? Previous to it, after it, absolutely. During the storm, not gonna happen, all right? So we're committed, we're like, okay, we're going to respond with gentleness. We're going to respond with peace. This type of spirit will say, that didn't get you? Well, let me try this. And it will up the game, let me tell you. It will up the ante every time, okay? And you're going to be tested. You're going to be tested. You are going to be tested. You're going to sit, say, no, the Lord told me to not give it the response that it wants now i'm talking about the spirit of rage here and i and i could use different illustrations i have you know spirit of insignificance i have to come against the negativity the cycles those types of things hereditary in my family we all have a loophole we all have a weakness we all have something okay so i'm not just talking about the spirit of rage but i'm giving you an example okay that when you try to shift when you try to say, I will not give this the response that it wants, expect, expect it to be brought to the next level and stand. And it may even bring it to the next level, but stand, stand in what you said. I will not give it the response that it wants. And from that, you're gonna bear fruit, actually. Trust me, my husband and I have bore much fruit in just the past year and a half when the Lord told us fire on top of fire 
only breeds more fire. And we have these discussions around the house when we sense that a certain child might be getting ready to go over the edge, that we're very careful to not put a log on the fire, okay? We tell them, that's fire, don't put a log on it, <laughs> okay? We put water on fire, all right? So those are some practice, practical examples to consider, um, but do not give the devil the response that he wants. When you do, you're just setting yourself up for a vicious cycle over and over, okay? And you're human, I'm human, and we do it, but we gotta recognize it, and we have to put a stop to it and say, I will not give you this response any longer, okay? Someone once told me a while back, I can't remember if I said this um, in this video already or not, but it was in my notes. But to come against a spirit with the opposite spirit, okay? So if you're, you're being um, enticed by pride, come against it with humility, okay? If, if you're being enticed with negative, depressing thoughts, come against it with joy, okay? The fruits of the spirit, come against it with the opposite spirit and watch. Now again, like I said, you're gonna be tested. It's gonna level up. It's gonna say, oh, that doesn't get you? Well, how about this? And you're going to be tested. And you're going to try. You're going to be tried. But God is saying, stand. When you've done all, stand. Okay. So I hope that blesses you guys. I hope you have a wonderful day. Whether you're going to work, whether you're going to school, whether you're staying at home with kids, whether you're homeschooling, I don't know. Whatever it is, God bless you guys, and I will see you in other videos.